All right, got an exciting video for you. Arturia sent me the Mini Fuse 4 audio interface. Just hit the streets a couple weeks ago. I'm gonna show you some of the features of it, what I think is great. We'll try hooking it up to a couple of different devices like a Machine Plus and see how it works in standalone mode. And then we'll also hook it up to an iPad and just help you decide if this is the right audio interface for you. They're not paying me to make the video, but of course they sent it over. So I count that as payment and I'm very appreciative of what they do for me. So I may have an affiliate link to something like Tomen if you wanna help me out with that. And I'll put that in the description. So let's go over and hook this thing up to a machine plus and talk a little bit more about the details of this audio interface. When I opened this and pulled it out of the box, I was definitely impressed with the feel of it. It is metal, just feels really high quality. It's This one is very narrow, so it will definitely fit in your gear bag nicely. And the knobs on the front are kind of a grippy plastic and they feel great. The knobs also feature LEDs that double as VU meters, which is kind of cool. You can see that I've got a microphone plugged in right now and we're seeing signals show up on this knob right here. So if I crank it up even farther, eventually you'll see that it's clipping and it's showing us that with the, the knob itself, which is super helpful if you have an audio interface that doesn't have some kind of indicator of clipping on it. Um, I find that kind of frustrating or annoying because a lot of times you're just setting up levels and you don't want to have to open up your software to or open up the software mixer or whatever to see what your levels are at. You can just get a sense of where your levels are at right from the audio interface. So yeah, good, nice, good quality monitor knob. We've got also some meters on the front that show you the level coming out of your DAW. So right now, if I press play on Machine Plus, we can see signal is coming in. And other than that, we got combo jacks on the front. That means you can have XLR or a TRS input or a TS input. So you could plug an electric guitar in, you could plug a keyboard in, and you can also plug in two microphones on this version. And on the Minifuse 4, you get two headphone outputs, which is obviously very nice if you are recording somebody. And in my studio, I don't have a separate room for recording. So if I'm recording somebody, they're in the same room as me, I can't have the speakers on. And that means I need to wear headphones as well as them. So having two headphone outputs is essential for my setup. And if you're a home studio kind of person, you're probably gonna be in a similar situation. So having two headphone outputs, it's great. Of course, you can get a splitter if you don't have that. If you have like the Minifuse 2, I think only has one headphone output. So that's not a big deal. And on the back, of this you can see that we've got two more inputs so this one does have four inputs obviously so you could have a synthesizer plugged in i have eight ins and outs on my audio interface right now and i kind of need that because i have so many synthesizers plugged into my machine all the time and so i could get by that with a little mixer but for me it just makes more sense to have a bigger audio interface but with this one you could have two microphones plugged in the front or two guitars or whatever and then you can also have synthesizers plugged into the back. So three and four, and we'll see in the software that you can actually set it so that only one of the inputs sets the input level. So if you're plugging a keyboard in, you could get make sure that the left and right levels are exactly the same, which is really cool. We've also got four outputs. So we've got one, two, three, and four, which is a little weird because it's, it's backwards, but they've got it backwards because you're gonna be looking at it this way. So here's one, two, three, and four when you're looking at it from the front. You could use them as like a send and return kind of thing. So you could actually have this go out to some hardware effects and then come back into three and four right here. And then we've got regular MIDI ports, which is fantastic. And the last thing they've got on their audio interfaces is this USB hub, which is so cool. So if you're still using software that needs a dongle, you could plug your dongle into there. You've also got the ability to plug other devices into um, this, these ports. So it's just extra USB ports. And if you've looked at Macs lately, you'll notice that there aren't a lot of USB ports. So it's nice to have extras on there. So highly useful. And then you can see right now I'm going bus powered because this device is class compliant and bus powered, which means I can plug it into my machine plus and it will power the audio interface and show up on Machine Plus to let me record. So let's have a look at the setup here on Machine and you'll see how that hooks up. And right now I notice that plugging a synthesizer in via USB doesn't work for the keyboard. So I've got this little micro lab here and I tried plugging it into the back of this guy, 
and I wasn't getting MIDI in to the Machine Plus. Maybe what we'll do right now is try plugging in the audio interface to power and see if that makes these USB ports available. So I'm gonna plug this into the USB hub at the back. And then I'm gonna plug in the Mini Fuse 4. Now we'll head over to Machine and see if this keyboard pops up. And my guess is that it won't, but what I could do of course is plug this USB into Machine Plus because it has two USB ports on it as well. So that's not really a problem. I was just wondering if I could have extra devices hooked up to it via USB. As far as MIDI goes, let's go to settings and we can see there's our, our MIDI settings right there. And if I go over to input devices, we can see we've got the Mini Fuse 4. Oh, look at this. Mini Fuse 4 MIDI. So this has its own MIDI ports on it, which of course we can access right here. And we can turn those on with the status on button right there. And since I plugged the keyboard into the audio interface and I actually plugged the audio interface in, let's go have a look over here. You can see that now my Microlab MIDI is actually showing up. You can see that it's actually working. This is great. So what that means is I now have a free port on my Machine Plus for something else. I don't know what else I might be using it for, but I've also got one more USB port I could have plugged in. Maybe I'd have a Microfreak plugged into this port as well. Let's try that. Okay, so now I've got my Microfreak. I'm gonna plug this into the USB hub at the back and it powers on, which is fantastic. So we can see it's working and Let's now go over to input devices on here and see if, look at that. Arturia Microfreak also shows up on my Machine Plus. This is exciting. So all I have to do is turn that one on and now I'm sending MIDI information from the Microfreak into my Machine Plus. So I can have all of these things controlling it and they're all just hooked up to the audio interface. It's pretty cool, I was not expecting this to work. Last thing you would have to do with the Microfreak setup is you'd have to take the audio output, plug that into the mini fuse, and then have that show up in Machine Plus and leave the monitor button on so you could hear it. But this is all working together very nicely. So the fact that this works with Machine Plus is outstanding because the Machine Plus only has one microphone input and it is not phantom powered. So now we could have regular XLRs plugged in and all we have to do is go over here to audio and choose the device. So instead of setting your audio interface to internal, the internal uh, headphones and microphone input of the Machine Plus, we're setting to hardware and it says M4O. So that must mean the uh, Mini Fuse 4. So I set it to device and now I can go to the next pages and I can see the inputs right here. I can see how they're routed. I've got outputs as well. And then once you're ready to record, of course you go over to sampling. And then uh, on page one here, I would set it to, I uh, probably set that to free. And then I would go to external mono input one. And now that's input one on my audio interface. So now what I'm gonna do is plug this into my iPad. All right, so word of note, I just tried plugging in with this USB-C to USB, what is that, A? adapter and plugging that into my iPad and it didn't work. So didn't get any lights showing up on this, but using a regular USB-C cable to USB-C works just fine. Now, one thing I will also say is I tried plugging this into my iPhone, my new iPhone, and I couldn't get it to show up at all, even if it was plugged into power. Right now, I'm not plugged into power. So this is bus powered off the iPad, which is really cool. So if anybody out there has got this working with their iPhone, let me know in the comments because I couldn't figure out how to get it to work with my iPhone. But it's working beautifully with my iPad. So right now I've got Cubasis on here and just plugging it right in. I get power, I get phantom power, and I'll leave phantom power on because I've got a little microphone right here. Maybe what I'll do right now is just try adding uh, an instrument and see if we can get this little keyboard to work because right now it isn't. What happens if I plug power into this audio interface? And guess what? Just trust me, it's working. MIDI is actually going through the micro lab into the USB on the back of this guy as long as I have 
it powered up. So it's gotta be plugged in in order to use USB. If I didn't have USB, I think I would be fine with a MIDI port setup. So I could just go into the MIDI ports and still just rely on the rest being bus powered. If you want to use the USB ports on this guy in any way, you have to have it plugged in. Okay, so now I've got my guitar plugged in. I've got phantom power on, I've got this microphone on, and I am ready to try recording something here in Cubasis. So let's press record. So there we can see our audio recorded. Let's have a listen to it. And just trust me, it sounds good. So beautiful audio recording on the iPad. We've got MIDI through the USB port on the back and the ability to hook up a whole bunch of stuff and record it now on your iPad. Very, very cool. All right, let's go over to the computer and check out the software and whatever else they got thrown into this nice little package of an audio interface. All right, so that was very enlightening. I've learned things about this audio interface that it can do that I didn't expect it to be able to do. And these USB ports on the back are looking to be super useful, not only just for like plugging other stuff up to your computer, but also hooking up other gear in situations like with the iPad and Machine Plus. So let's just look really quickly at the software that it comes with, because it does come with a, a bundle of software. And so you can see you get Ableton Live Lite, which is a great way to start out with Ableton, see if you actually like the DAW before you go buy it. it comes with Analog Lab Intro, probably a bunch of synthesizers and a bunch of their effects. Also comes with Native Instruments Guitar Rig 6 LE, which is pretty cool because they don't have an amp simulator uh, by Arturia. So it's neat that they're teaming up with Native Instruments there. I like to see companies working together. And then we've got an auto-tune trial and then a splice creator plan. Hmm. I've never actually used Splice myself, so let me know in the comments if you like Splice and if it's something I should look at in the future. So the last thing we should do is maybe just a quick comparison between the preamps on the Mini Fuse and the preamps on my Focusrite Claret 8 Pre. So we've got our guitar MF, which stands for Mini Fuse, of course. Here we go. You can see I'm actually clipping on the input but it's not really showing that on the output. So these are a little bit deceiving. Don't use those to judge your input level. Use the LED on this guy right here. We can see it getting red. Still too loud, back it off. You can see I'm at about 10 o'clock on this thing. And my guess is this input is going to be way hotter than the Focusrite because the Focusrite I always have to crank up quite a lot. All right, let's record some guitar. Okay, so now I've switched over to the Focusrite and we'll just play some guitar in here. I did have to crank up the level to about two o'clock on this one. So much hotter preamps on the Arturia audio interface. So let me record some guitar. All right, so now we'll just get these two guitars around the same level so that we can do a proper comparison. So it sounds a little thinner on the Focusrite to my ears, but they sound very similar. So to me, it's not a deal breaker in terms of the sound of the preamps, but they do sound good to my ears on an initial acoustic guitar record. And then last thing we should quickly look at is this little button. If I press this button right here, we see that we get the Minifuse Control Center. This is where we can make some sort of custom settings with our inputs and our output routing. And you can see that we actually do have a loopback feature in here, which is fantastic. And loopback capabilities are super important. Maybe I'll do a video about that in the future, but it just allows you to take the output of your whole DAW and route it somewhere else or route it internally. And then if we click the little settings here, we can also determine when the VU meters are gonna clip. We can also change the LED intensity, which is really nice, a nice little feature. There you have it, Arturia Mini Fuse 4. I definitely give this my thumbs up of approval. This is gonna be a beautiful audio interface for people who need at least two inputs and two XLR inputs. If you're somebody who's only gonna be recording with one microphone pretty much ever, then maybe you don't need this 
full-blown audio interface. If you're recording just yourself all the time, you probably don't need two headphone outputs, right? So then go look at one of the other Minifuse audio interfaces if that is the case. So thanks Arturia for sending over the Minifuse 4, really impressed with it. And thanks for watching this video. If you're new here, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the bell, and I'll see you in the next video.